This week on Report on Conditions, we'll take you to a motorhome fire in Menifee, a 60-acre vegetation fire in Harupa Valley, and we'll share important safety tips for National Drowning Prevention Month. Hello everyone and thank you for joining Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. I'm Alex Izagiri and today's date is May 11th, 2022. Last week, from May 2nd through May 8th, our firefighters responded to 3,516 calls for service. Included in those calls were 2,649 medical emergencies and 109 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 21 were vegetation fires and 21 were structure fires. Let's take a deeper look at a few highlighted incidents from this past week. On Wednesday, May 4th, firefighters arrived at a commercial vehicle fire at the 25,700 block of Trumbull Road in Menifee. Station 7 was the first to arrive and saw that one motorhome was burning with fire leading to a single family residence. An aggressive fire attack kept the fire contained to the motorhome and residence, but the incident ended up displacing three adults and three minors. To assess the home, the City of Menifee's Building and Safety Department was on scene. Later that night, firefighters responded to a traffic collision in the unincorporated area of Temecula. On arrival, firefighters found a vehicle that had gone off the side of a bridge where it landed 30 feet below into a creek bed. Within the vehicle was a single occupant with moderate injuries. The jaws of life were needed to remove the patient from the car where they were later treated on scene and transported to a local hospital. On the afternoon of Friday, May 6th, firefighters were dispatched in Harupa Valley to a vegetation fire on Granite Hill Drive and Pyrite Street. At first, the fire had burned three to five acres of vegetation and was spreading at a moderate rate, with the potential to spread up to 300 acres. Once the first chief officer arrived, he requested an additional two air tankers, one helicopter, and 15 fire engines. In the end, the fire burned 60 acres thanks to the hard work of not only Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department, but also the City of Riverside Fire Department, City of Colton Fire Department, Ontario Fire Department, Riverside Sheriff's Office, and Cal Fire Arson Investigation. Help me, help me, my son, my son, he's in the water. Ma'am, we're gonna send help. What's the address of the emergency? 25361 Mountain Spring Street, hurry. I'm gonna tell you how to give mouth to mouth. Pinch his nose, close, and completely cover his mouth with your mouth. The time 3111 and all units responding to the structure fire on A Street. Multiple reports, AMR's been started for a possible party trap. With hotter days around the corner, especially here in Riverside County, it's more important than ever to acknowledge the potential risks that come with relaxing by the water. In California, drowning is one of the leading causes of injury related deaths among children under the age of five. Fire Captain Joe Papandrea was brave enough to share his experience with us as well as provide key tips to prevent a tragedy like this from happening to anyone else. My name is Joe Papandrea, Fire Captain, Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department. On July 5th, 2019, my wife had called me at the fire station. It's a wretched call I've ever heard in my whole entire life. It was a phone call I picked up from my wife screaming, telling me that my throat. My little boy was found in the pool. It's horrifying, and these things you'd never think would happen to you. But through my son, I think I'm able to share this story, let you guys know in the county what type of layers of protection that we could offer. Supervision, alarms, appropriate fencing, and of course the ISR or survival swimming for infants. You can start as young as, young as six months old. Um, 
There's plenty of ISR classes or rescue classes within your community. And give your children a fighting chance to where if that does happen, they know what to do and how to survive. It's been the worst tragedy in my life. You know, it's changed immensely from my family, my coworkers at this firehouse. Um, you know, uh, if I could just say one thing, I, I hope that people take what I have to say and apply it to their daily life in and out throughout the state through family members. Um, these layers are, of protection are so important that you don't want to be in my shoes. I'll tell you that. And um, I think through this, there's a lot to learn. Accidents do happen, but at the same time, there's preventative measures that need to be in place. This past week, we had two prescribed burns within Riverside County, specifically in Lake Matthews and Lake Skinner. Let's go to Public Information Officer Rob Rosine, who was on site at Lake Matthews this past Wednesday. It is Wednesday, May 4th. We are out here near in the Lake Matthews area near Alco Road and Archer Road. We're actually conducting a vegetation management program as well as our firing operations class. It's a dual goal program so that we can, first of all, uh, remove some of these noxious, non-native weeds in the area. Just try to preserve some of these, the natural chaparral of the area. because so that's some of the habitat for the, uh, the kangaroo rat. The other uh, goal here today is, uh, it's also a class for some of our firefighters uh, to learn the different firing operations, different techniques for burning off plots of land like this. And, and finally, it's, it's just a good preparation for fire season as we're moving into that. So we, we burned approximately 60 acres across two plots. Uh, we had the one 20 acre plot and the 40 acre lot behind me. I would say we have approximately 80 to 100 firefighters out here today. We do have firefighters from obviously Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department, Cal Fire San Bernardino, uh, as well as our neighboring agencies uh, from Anaheim, uh, Orange County Fire Authority, the Morongo Fire District, all contributing to, uh, to help out with this. And we, they also have students in the class. They also provide uh, some of the contingency forces for us. Because obviously, you know, when we're doing fire operations, we need to have those safety contingencies in place. We are approaching wildfire season, and it's the, now is the time for people to be ready. I would encourage folks to visit readyforwildfire.org. I know sometimes maybe you think you live in an area where, where fire doesn't affect you. Uh, and lately, we're seeing fires impacting areas that, that haven't seen fire in 40, 50 years. We're, we're coming into a fire season that I think people need to be prepared for. They need to be preparing their homes, uh, clearing that defensible space around their homes because wildfire is coming. Hello, I'm Captain Richard Cordova here at the Information Office. Uh, today we have a special guest, uh, Dominic Pulsifer. He's with the CAL FIRE Local 281 Honor Guard, and he's the training officer uh, for the Honor Guard. So recently, you guys attended the FDIC National Fire Department Honor Guard competition. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we had gone out to Indianapolis, Indiana in the International Honor Guard competition. Uh, this competition is open to departments throughout Canada and the United States and basically uh, those that wish to compete uh, come out and do so. And we have four categories in which they evaluate us. Uh, they start off with an uh, inspection of our honor guard for those members that attend, and then they go into a uh, posting of colors, and then we do a casket carry and flag fold, and then the last detail is the casket watch, uh, silent guard. Well, wow, it sounds pretty intense, a lot of uh, stuff going on. What's the preparation uh, before all this, the training that you guys have to do to prepare yourselves for this event? 
It was probably a couple months of preparation on my behalf to uh, get things set up, coordinating with the event coordinators and staff out there. Um, and then we start off with uh, selecting people, um, their availability within our own honor guard. Um, those at that point, I tie in with them and we discuss their uniform needs. And then from there, I send out emails and correspondence to discuss what we'll be doing out there and the expectations. Prior to the competition itself, and we started our training. We do our training uh, that falls in line with our line of duty desk. In that, we will go through all of those details that I have mentioned and um, scrutinizing our, the smaller details, mm -hmm. um, our hand placement, our military bearing, our timing. Once we get through that, then um, it, competition arrives. So the competition itself, uh, I feel personally, is ancillary to our overall goal because those members that come out will be judged on all those smaller items. Mm -hmm. And my goal or in hope is that those members will return back to their units and to our honor guard to not only hold themselves at a higher caliber, but also uh, transfer what they've learned and keep an eye on the other honor guard members to keep our, um, our details clean and at a higher caliber. How long have you guys been going to this competition? So this year, uh, this was our second time in attendance. Three years ago, we went out and for the first time ever, our honor guard competed, our general members did. And um, we were fortunate enough to take first place. Oh, wow. Um, this year we had gone out and we did place second. It's still um, a great honor and I couldn't be more proud than I am with our honor guard and our members. And I totally have to agree with you. I'm so proud of our honor guard uh, statewide, the men and women that sacrificed their time doing uh, this for our family members and for our members that uh, perish in the line of duty or retirees. So uh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, for taking the time, being a part of the Honor Guard, and all the men and women out there that are part of our Honor Guard for representing not only our department, our union, but the family members out there that are grieving at a very hard time in their life. So thank you. Thank you. Last month, Victoria Ianika retired as a senior accounting assistant. Thank you, Victoria, for your 17 years of dedicated service. As far as promotions go, Mickey Del Pitt was promoted to an IT Supervisor in Communications Technology, and Carlos Ortega was promoted to Administrative Services Supervisor. Congratulations to you both. To stay up to date on current incidents as they happen in Riverside County, be sure to follow at CalFireRRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs, and Community Education Bureau, I'm Alex Zagiri. Thanks for watching.